So, uh, so as part of the agenda today, what we have is a first a quick introduction to Harness, followed by a quick intro to continuous delivery. Then you already heard of the announcement from Dave that now we have a new edition, uh, the Harness CD Community Edition. We will do a quick demo of the, the CD Community Edition and talk about how you can use it in your, uh, how you can use it for your needs. And finally, we'll end up end, end with a session of Q&A. All right. So Harness is an end-to-end -end software delivery platform. So we start all the way at the beginning of the life cycle, of the developer's life cycle, where we let the developer uh, create an artifact using uh, a module called continuous integration. After the artifact is created, the, the developer can then deploy his or her artifacts to a certain target infrastructure using a module called continuous delivery. Once the uh, once the uh, once you have the artifact running in, in a certain infrastructure, the developer can then turn on or turn off certain features for certain customers using a module called feature flags. Finally, all of this can be then be monitored using um, using a module called cloud cost management. For today, we are focusing on continuous delivery. Okay, now let, let, let me quickly introduce, we, we talk about harness continuous delivery. Let me quickly introduce what continuous delivery means. So continuous delivery is nothing but moving artifacts which have been built in a, in a, prior, in a prior step through a set of pipelines. This could be approvals, um, checks and so, and so forth to a desired destination in a safe and sustainable fashion. So this is our definition of continuous delivery. And the artifacts again could be of different kinds. You could have jar files, um, uh, armies, uh, you could have Docker images, you could have serverless, uh, serverless artifacts and so on. And then we're really, really excited to announce that we now have a new edition of Harness CD, which is the Harness CD Community Edition. With this edition, you'll be able to install a really light, uh, lightweight edition of uh, Harness CD, which is used by our hundreds of our Harness customers in your laptops and give it a try. But I don't know what is this? What is this? What is the community edition? And, 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 and let me quickly introduce what the, the community edition means. One, it's a, it's a software version of, of the Harness CD service, which is being used by hundreds of customers. You can install this on your laptops. And it is very, very, uh, it is a very small footprint. It only needs about three GB of RAM and two CPUs to, to run this. We provide two uh, very uh, well-known installers, so Docker Compose and Helm, in Helm Chart installers to, to get this up and running in your, in your laptops. And you can, you can create your first CD pipelines and have it up and running in 15 minutes. Uh, we give you quick starts, so you can just look at our quick starts and get started very easily. And then if any time you need any kind of commercial features or you need enterprise support, you can of course upgrade to the enterprise versions. At this point of time, we're supporting Kubernetes deployments, but we do plan to provide VM, ECS, PCF and serverless deployments uh, uh, very quickly. And, and Harness, Harness really loves open source. So you, you can see with the commitment towards uh, in the past, we had the CI module, and then we, ha we had an offering called Drone, which is completely open source, uh, use, which uses Apache 2.0 license. And now we've taken a step forward from CI, and with, with CD, now we have a free and open community edition, which is, uses the Polyform Shield source available license. So overall, so Harness is, look, is, is, is we, we support free and open access to code with community collaboration. Kunal, do you want to cover, talk about uh, how easy it is to install Harness? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Gunnar. Uh, wow, switch. We're all, in the, we're all in the same room, so we're going to be uh, just switching uh, chairs. Yeah, switching chairs. Yeah, we're sitting in a small room here, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, apologies. Yeah, my name is Gunnar Chandrasekharan. Um, uh, I'm a principal software engineer, and um, I'm responsible for you know, creating this open source installers. And I also take care of on-premises engineering uh, for Harness. OK, let me go through um, uh, the um, actual repository, the code repository. And then as uh, Pranay um, you know, uh, introduced, two very well-known uh, industry standard installers that people love uh, to do their to on their laptops. It is. Um, Docker Compose and uh, Help Chart installations. I'm gonna take um, you guys through that. Oops. 
pipes in the firefox yeah it's just here um, all right so um this is our public repository um which is the harness cd community and this is just the installer uh, installer part as we promised that is uh, there are two different uh, installer types uh, docker compose and help so each of it has um, its own instructions easy instructions to you know get started and all of these things will start running in um, your laptop or any any cloud of your choice within like five minutes and within 15 minutes as Pranay promised you you will be running your first pipeline in the continuous delivery software yeah so th these are the um, uh, instructions very simple instructions and uh, it's docker native way uh, we, we try to provide um, the docker compose uh, file and um, and there are a few troubleshooting steps as well uh, to see if, if something is not working uh, you could just see the troubleshooting steps and i could get started uh, by following these simple steps uh, just uh, clone the uh, clone the repo go into the uh, harness folder and you just need to run Docker Compose up. If you if you just want to try it in your laptop, nothing nothing else is required. And uh, access it through a local host uh, uh, URL, HTTP local host. You will be up and running. And uh, as and if you want to try this in, on your separate environment or expose this to your colleagues, and then you want to keep it as uh, uh, ever running software, then you should use the advanced configurations just mentioned below. All it requires is just export a vari variable called harness host and give your host name or an IP address so that your colleagues can, uh, you know, reach reach this um, installation and they can also be part of, you know, what you are um, uh, installing. So, so that is Docker Compose, and if you go into um, the Helm, it's again as very simple and similar instructions. You clone the repo and then go into the Helm folder and stuff Docker Compose. And all that you need to do is uh, Helm install uh, Harness if you have Minikube already running. If not, just uh, you know download. There are the instructions given here for the for installing the um, Minikube. And these days Docker is also coming up with uh, you know, pre-installed Kubernetes. So you could just um, do away with it as well. You don't have to install Minikube. That, Docker, Kubernetes Docker is also uh, fine with this, and if you if you have this Kubernetes uh, cluster that is running in your uh, on your Mac, then you could just go ahead and uh, start with this command Helm install. That uh, that's a very simple command, and after that, just do this command to wait and follow the on-screen instructions to see how you access uh, the software on your laptop. Or again, if you want to uh, deploy it in uh, cloud of your choice. Are a, are a different environment, the same instructions hold good. And then again, you wanted to have uh, your harness host uh, to be mentioned and you can expose your service um, to others as well, uh, to your colleagues as well. So that's about the installers. And uh, here, is, here is the um, uh, repository. It is very simple. It's under the harness organization, harness CD community. And uh, you have a very small blog, blog post So that is a blog post that explains the same thing that I just spoke to you guys. So you could also go to this uh, to see uh, uh, clear instructions and then uh, you know some of the steps that you could uh, really get started quickly. All right, that's it from my side. Okay. I'll, I'll hand it over to Pranay again. So what you've seen so far is, uh, so as, as you heard from Guna, you, you've seen how easy it is to install uh, Harness. So we will share the links to the, the, the GitHub repo, the quick start and the blog uh, at the end of the session. So we have a quick demo. Uh, in this demo, uh, we actually have already installed, I've already installed the Harness Community Edition on my laptop. I'm just gonna quickly show you how to log in, how to execute a pipeline, and then how you can interact uh, some of the quick, some of the capabilities of the Community Edition. It's, it's a quick and snappy demo. So.
So this is how the, uh, once you install, uh, when, when you install the computer edition, either using the Docker Compose or the Helm installer, this is how, when, once you sign up, this is how you, the, um, the sign-in page looks like. So you have a simple and easy uh, email and uh, password sign up, sign in. So once you signed in, uh, the, one of the basic constructs you have to create is a project. Project is a construct which houses all the resources uh, into, into, into a logical uh, envelope. And in the project, what I have done is I've already created a pipeline. Uh, this pipeline, all it does, it's a very, it's, it's a very simple pipeline. In, in, in reality, a pipeline could be really complex. It could, it could have multiple steps and stages right from approvals and uh, deploying to different kinds of environments. So before you deploy to prod, it, you could go through several dev environments, several QA environments, several staging environments, and finally you would want to push it to prod. In my case, uh, it's a really simple pipeline, which, just, which is just deploying to one single environment, the dev environment. And all I'm doing is deploying an Nginx uh, image from uh, reading off of Docker Hub and then, Docker Hub, uh, and then deploying it to, uh, to a, a cluster in, on GCP. So now all I'm doing essentially is, and you can also see the previous executions of this uh, pipeline. So here uh, you can see the previous executions of the pipeline. And now if I just want to rerun the pipeline, I just, let's say I just click on this and say run pipeline. And all the inputs and uh, so, for the sake of the demo, all the inputs have been sort of hard coded into the pipeline. You could make the inputs configurable and have the user enter them at runtime as well. Now, in a matter of a few seconds, what you'll notice is this image, the Nginx image, is going to get deployed to a GCP cluster. We, we will explain what is happening behind the scenes uh, shortly, uh, but you will see this in action. And once this is deployed, I'm just waiting for a few more seconds to get deployed. So while the deployment is, yeah, so it looks like the deployment is done. Uh, so what, is, what has happened behind the scenes is uh, the, uh, I've basically created deployed to a cluster on, on GCP here, and now I'm able to access, so, so I'm able to access the Nginx using this URL. So you can see the welcome to Nginx page here. Now just quickly talking about the real power of community edition. So you have, you have a really easy, intuitive user experience for you to create your pipelines. In addition to uh, the, the user experience, the UX, you can also interact with the community edition in two other ways. One is the APIs. You have a rich set of APIs. So these are all the APIs which exist here. So for example, the, when I clicked any action which can be done through the UI can be done using an, using an API. So when I clicked on execute of a pipeline, I could do the same using an API. I can also create a pipeline using an API as well. So pretty much anything you can do through the user, user, user interface can be done through an API. So that's one, let me just, I can quickly show you an execution of an API. So here I've, I've executed a bunch of APIs, which return, let's say, give me the list of projects, return the list of pipelines, pipeline executions. So it's just about, uh, it's basically a curl command. So that's all you need to do to, uh, to call APIs. Further, the second way to interact with the system is using, uh, you can use something called config as code or using YAML files. For example, here, I can create resources, uh, like the, the entire pipeline can be authored using YAML. So if, if you look at this tab, so there are two, two visualizations of the pipeline. One is the visual view, which, I, which you just saw. And then the second way to, to imagine a pipeline is basically a set of YAML. So I could, if I want to create a new pipeline, all I could do is just copy, copy this particular YAML file, make a few changes, and then boom, with just, with just a paste, pasting this YAML, I've created my second pipeline. So very, very powerful. Not only this, you can also create resources in your Git repositories and have them created in, in Harness. For example, here, what, have, what, what, have, what I have here is, this is my um, test Git repository, and in here, I was, I was able to create three uh, resources and it, I was able to create the same resources in, in Harness as well. So you're able to create, again, let's summarize what you can do is you can use the UI, of course, to create resources, your pipelines. You can use APIs. And finally, you can also use the config as code experience. So you can use, you can create directly in, in Harness using the YAML, or you can create, create the resources in your Git repos 
and have them pushed into harness. So now let's, uh, I will hand it over to Srinivas to explain, to demystify what really happened when we executed the pipeline. Hi guys, uh, I'm Srinivas Rao Gurubelli. I am a uh, founding engineer and distinguished engineer. And basically like I designed and developed uh, the harness, uh, harness continuous deployment product. I've been waiting for this day where uh, the day for a long time that the code what I've written is now uh, source available so that like many people can contribute and enhance the our experience. So let, let's talk about that like right uh, in, uh, in order to do the continuous deployment to make your service to be do continuous deploy continuously deploy your service. There are three main questions to answer. The one question is like the first one is what I'm deploying. It consists of the two parts, the image, the source code, and the manifest, which contains the uh, your state, your, your end state of the cluster. And the second question is where do I deploy? Like I have the artifact or I have the image, I have the spec, now where to deploy? Where to deploy is nothing but it is your target cluster. The target cluster can run in the Kubernetes. Uh, it is a Kubernetes cluster. It can be an Azure, it can be the Google Cloud, it can be anywhere. And then once you know the artifact, once you know the destination to deploy, now the, the thing what uh, RNS or any CD tool give you that, how, how you can orchestrate your deployment in terms of the pipeline. It is a pipeline. Pipeline is nothing but it is consistent of the stages, right? Like say the main use case, if you talk about this, you want to propagate the your changes from the lower environment to the production environment. If you see in a simple one example, the pipeline consists of three. So you say deploy the your source code to the QA, then do the approval and deploy to prod. Right? Once you have answers for all these, how let's now go over go over the let's see how you can make make this is a reality. You have the answers for the three questions. Now how you can do you if you download the RNS community CD itself. All what you need is like, what are the new needs that you need to install agent or runner, which is a famous like uh, some process in your cluster, such that RNS manager can connect to. We usually call it RNS delegate. It's a piece of the software which is running in your premises. And second one is handle to handle to your cluster. What does it mean is in order to that RNS or the delegate to communicate to the cluster, you need to have a credentials and uh, the location. The location is nothing but it could be like uh, you can run the delegate on the same cluster or the location can be the location of your cluster where it is running, usually the master URL. Then uh, then the location of the your case AML manifests. Basically, it is a git, git connector, the, the, the repository where you place your configuration files and the location of the container image registry where your source code is available. It is basically one of the Docker container, right? A Docker registry. It could be Docker, Docker Hub connector. It could be the ACR or the GCR or any 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 artifact repository. All once you you created these four resources, then it is as Pranay mentioned that either you could create a pipeline through config as code or through API or through UI. It is very seamless experience. You can create a pipeline with the desired stages. Deploy to QA and approvals and run pipeline. Um, so that, that's all from my side. I think uh, now I'm going to hand over to uh, Pranay to talk about why RNS CD community, community Edison. So, oh, and uh, before we go, uh, we have a question for you, which is, does it support non-Kubernetes hosts like VMs? Yeah, we can answer. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point of time, we are only supporting uh, Kubernetes deployments but we'll shortly add support for VMs, serverless, and, and, and other kinds of deployment shortly. So please stay tuned, and then uh, you, you'll, see, you'll, you'll start seeing support for other kinds of deployments. Uh, thank you, Srinivas. So we will continue, and I'll, let me talk, take you through, you know, so why, why using CD computation makes sense for you. So there are a lot of our tools out there, other tools out there, CD tools, but for example, there's a really famous case uh, where uh, where, a user, where many users have talked about when they've used Jenkins and all the stages, all the all the stages in the pipeline look great, 
but still they don't see the deployment being successful. So we avoid all of, you can avoid all of these issues with harness. So harness, we make it really easy for you to, to build a pipeline using any kind of APIs, configures code, UI, make it very intuitive. Things go wrong, you get you see like error handling right up, right, right there if something fails. And you can have your first pipeline. Uh, you, you can have your first pipeline uh, and deploy something to your target infrastructure in less than 15 minutes. So that's the that's the true power of Harness com CD Community Edition. And then taking you again to the sort of the the best in class features. So one is we provide automated canary and login deployments. So without you writing a single line of script or code. You can just pick, you can, in, in fact, on the UI, you can just pick a deployment strategy as Canary or Blue Green, and then Harness CD computation is able to figure out based on your choice and, and follow the deployment strategies. Number two, we also do automated infrastructure provisioning. If as part of your pipeline, you want to deploy, uh, you want to first, let's say, bring up your cluster, and in the second step, deploy a certain artifact to your cluster, you can create your cluster in the pipeline as well. Number three, uh, this is what distinguishes us as well, is a very easy and, and developer-friendly pipeline as code or config as code experience. You can maintain your, you can create, well, you can create your pipelines using the UI. You can also create them and, and the APIs as well. You can, you, can create the, you can also create them as YAML files in your, in your Git repository and make Git the source of truth for your pipelines. So a lot of choices for you. Uh, to, to create the to create harness resources uh, using different kinds of use, using the UI or the API or config as code, and then finally, while we support Kubernetes right now, traditional deployments ECS, PCF, and serverless are coming soon. And then we, we do realize that while uh, you know, so most users will be able to get it up and running and start using it with no help. There may be cases where you may need some help. So if you need help, we offer sort of two channels for you to reach out to us. One is uh, one is the, the, the Slack channel. We'll share the links to the Slack channel shortly. And then it, it is being, uh, we monitor the Slack channel and anytime you have a question, we will definitely get back to you. And the second way is to go to the, the forum. So in the forum, you may already see a question asked by another user from the community. So you may get your answer immediately, or if you, you can just ask the question again, and then we'll happy to answer these questions for you. And these are the, 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 we felt that the main resources which you would need to get started. One is a Git repository, which Guna shared earlier. So this had the links to the, uh, the quick start, the blogs and so forth. So this is the GitHub repo. The second is the Slack. This is how you would, uh, uh, so if you had any question or you need help, you would, uh, this is the Slack channel you would, you would uh, sign up to. Third is the community forum. This is where you can look at all the Q and the questions and then even ask, ask questions if you don't find an answer, if you don't find your question already there. And finally, this is the link to the API specs, the REST API specs, which I shared earlier. So with this, uh, we've concluded the presentation and then we're happy to take any kind of questions uh, you, you may have. Okay, so um, we've already answered one of the questions, which was where, uh, where are we going? What are we going to support as far as platforms and hosts? And the answer was today, any Kubernetes really, right? Mm -hmm. And what was the answer about future platforms? Or is that in, are we intending to support that in the future? Yes. So we, we do uh, intend to support traditional uh, PCF, serverless, uh, ECS deployments. Uh, you, you, you'll, you'll see us adding support for other kinds of deployments. That's great. Okay. Well, I think that's all we have for questions. And uh, so let me just wrap things up. Um, oh, let's see, we have a chat here. There was mention of approvals in the deployment process. How does that work? That's from Maud. Approvals in mm -hmm. the deployment process. So I, yeah, go ahead, Shinivas, you want to take that? Yeah. So the, there are the three, uh, there are uh, usually the different kinds of approvals. Yes, there is an RNS UI uh, approval where you can come and approve. It will be waiting for that approval, someone to approve in the UI. Or, and we have the uh, integration for the approval with the Jira and ServiceNow. Where, but, but that is not yet available right now, but the, you can have the approval with Arnas UI for now. 
And and you could add a stage called uh, approval stage and then honest approval and say that uh, approval and set up stairs. Then if you see this one, like, so these are the approvals, whoever the part of this user groups, you need to sell the user groups to, there are no user groups right now, but once you sell that user groups, uh, this let let's say this will be waiting for the uh, yeah. Okay. Another question here. Yeah. Or are you still going? No. Okay. Yeah. Another question, which is: Is it possible to scale this community edition into production, or will the license change make that impossible? I think I need to be clear, like, um, yeah, so the license, it's not so much a license change as it is the license that we have is a uh, source available license, which does come with it some restrictions. Um, but I don't think the licenses are going to restrict you, right? That's right. So you are free to install this on, on, on uh, let's say, on your laptop, but you could install this in, let's say, your own cluster running on any kind of public cloud. Uh, you're free to use this for production as well. We don't restrict that in terms of the uh, Community edition. Mm -hmm. However, the things to look out. Yeah, so we do have different kinds of profiles. Uh, we have a uh, sort of a dev profile, production profile. So you'll see that you'll see those values of. In case you want to install this in your. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And going to the. Uh... This is my one second. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, here. Uh, if you see in the, um, yeah, just go around. And then for home, we have values that production. If you see just below there, see values that Preference. Okay. Yeah. So you could. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. So you can hear you. Yeah. So if you want to use a different profile, we have the values that, uh, values that production at YAML, and we could change. Uh, any desired size, and it, it could be your entire uh, production requirement for files. Yeah, you could use that. So that's how we control uh, our two different profiles. By default, it's a you know, minimal laptop profile that we offer. You don't have to do any any changes to the install script. But um, yeah, you could go into that values dash production .yaml file, and you could uh, I, I can show you the file as well. That is a file uh, in the. Uh, in the just about just go about the next yeah. thing. Just go about. Yeah. Inside in inter harness. Inter harness. Yeah. And yeah, you see two different profiles. Well, this is YAML. So these are the resources you are free to change. And it's it, all of those things uh, should still go, hold good. And yet, you know, it, it will be your big production deployment. Yeah. It's a yeah, production version. You can use that. The, the only thing to note here is. Um, so with community edition, you, you're not getting uh, the sort of enterprise support, 24 by seven support. So that's one thing to keep note of. So in a, if you're willing to not have 24 by seven support from harness and you're able to do it yourself, you are you are free to use this for uh, your production needs. So Pranay, so you could uh, share the feature list yeah. that uh, it's not available for community edition. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there's some features that aren't there, but other than that, you can do right. Yeah, you can do it, it mostly. Want, right? Other than that, it should work as a- Mostly you can do whatever. Yeah, most of the CD functionalities is available in community edition. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, great question. So let's just let another question here. Um, can you use it for an IoT deployment? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, like MDM, mobile device. Mobile device, yes. In the future, uh, that is a plan. Uh, we, we are like, uh, Actually, strengthening the RNS uh, CD for the big enterprise customers and everything. And our focus is will be like, uh, we'll be doing the mobile deployment and we'll do the uh, ML ops uh, kind of like, uh, and we have the plans in future to you can deploy your 
uh, uh, models like AI, AI models, right? All those will, will come in future. Yes, we are going to support it in the future. And um, uh, imagine like uh, Ornest is not only about the CD, Ornest is the platform where is the DevOps platform where all we are going to have support for every single need, whatever the developers needs in terms of the DevOps. Great. And then it says, is there any open source that does um, know? Not that email. we are aware of it, unless you do some customization around it and scripting it. And I'm not sure that uh, we, we I, I, uh, I've been in this uh, industry for the last five years. We don't have any, like, I don't know anything like that. We have not come across. We have not come across, yes. Good answer. Okay. All right. Good questions so far. I think uh, we have stuff in here, but no more questions. So why don't we go ahead and wrap it up? Um, I don't know if there's a, another slide. It's okay. We don't have to go to the slide yeah. again. Um, or do you want to throw another slide? Depending. So the the I think it was just two. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, thanks a lot for uh, joining us here today. Um, so there are some key takeaways. One is, uh, so Harness has a new continuous delivery community edition out there, so which you can leverage. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really lightweight version of Harness CD, which is used by hundreds of Harness customers, which you can, which you can install in your laptops. Um, it is really powerful. You can have your uh, deployments done in less than 15 minutes. So that's, that's the second takeaway. And number three are all these resources out here. So if you want to install it, if you want to, if you have any, any kind of questions or need help, please take a look at these resources here. The GitHub repo has links to uh, the, the quick start guides, the Slack and forums for, for getting any kind of help, the APIs for, you know, if you want to use APIs to create all your resources and execute your pipelines, you can take a look at your API specs. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty powerful. Awesome. So the whole idea is like, we want to make a uh, uh, developer first approach want to make the developer to get started and uh, the whole DevOps is going for that. Everything should be available for the developer to make his day-to-day -day activity uh, useful. Quickly, when you open CD, do you cover uh, DevSecOps artifact? Um, yes, uh, we don't do artifact so, management. Let's uh, uh, repeat the question first. Uh, because uh, when you say full CICD, do you cover Yes, the cops, artifacts, That's okay. So let me take the, uh, if I understand that artifact management, uh, uh, if you talk about that artifact management is like you are, uh, build, uh, we have the CI, uh, open source CI is available, which builds the artifact and pushes to the artifact repository. But we are not the ones which store the artifact. That is one, like JFrog. We don't do that. There are, there is a plan to do that, but we are not right now. We are not the, Artifact repositories, but uh, do you cover DevSecOps? Yes, we do integrate with. Uh, you can you can in a pipeline you can have a step which calls the different security scans, and we do have one product called like security scan product, which is available uh, for the uh, um, scanning and everything that purposes that DevSecOps purposes. Okay. A good question. Yeah, you. good questions. Thank you, folks. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up now. Um, as as we heard, we've got the Harness Continuous Delivery Community Edition product. You guys can go download it from that uh, GitHub repo. Follow the instructions there, and uh, you'll have uh, downloaded it and running it. If you need any help, we have a couple different places you can go to help. You can get the Slack channel there. You can see there on um, the screen. You can go to Harness Community slack.com and create an account and we've got folks there who are ready to answer your questions or uh, engage with you um, from for some light banter if you want and uh, we've also got a forum which is online that's a discourse forum and you can post questions there and these are the questions that you would post in the forum is, are more along the lines of questions that like other people might want to see the answers to we can post those there too and then there's the api docs and if you want to get involved with this project, 
uh, you know, we, we have a source available li uh, license, but quite frankly, it's not limiting you in any way other than if you are trying to run this as a service uh, to um, provide a competitive offering. But other than that, you can do whatever you want. So um, if, if you would like to use this in some way that uh, you're unsure about, just let us know. But we would love to hear your use cases and maybe some ideas that you have for this project. And if you want to contribute to it, get involved, just let us know. Probably in the Slack uh, channel is the best way. Or you can uh, reach out to us on Twitter, which is uh, harnessio, is our Twitter handle. Or you can reach me via um, my Twitter handle is Dave Nielsen, that's N I E L S E N. Or uh, that's, those are probably the easiest ways. So thank you again for joining us today. I'd like to also thank our um, our four panelists, uh, Brene and Luna and Srinivasa. And thank you all for joining us. We, we hope that uh, we'll see you again.